Hey guys, welcome to my first Minecraft mod tutorial using Mod Loader. I'll be showing you guys how to make a custom block with Mod Loader, and that way you'll be able to send it to your friends or anyone. And uh, all they have to do is pretty much copy two files into their Minecraft jar file, and it will work. So might as well get started. So I'm going to open up Eclipse so I can edit Java files, or you could use a text editor or whatever you want. And um, in case you didn't find from the last tutorial, but the source files we're going to edit are on the C drive and then in the MCP underscore version 6 in your source folder and then Minecraft, Net, Minecraft, and Source. And these are... I shouldn't have that. But uh, all these are your Java files, so... These are the ones we're going to edit. And if you've... Uh, correctly uh, copied mod loader into your minecraft jar file before uh, decompiling it you should have a mod loader if I can find it there it is you should have this and base mod so okay we're gonna go ahead and open up base mod so just navigate to your java source files and I'm gonna open base mod.java and I'm also going to open up modloader.java and I'm also going to open up block.java just for reference and there's one other file I need and I need to create it so if you go to base mod I'm just gonna this is how I create a new file you can do it other ways but I'm just copy and paste it and I'm gonna rename it to whatever your mod name is. Now, when you name your mods, you want to make sure you have, you say mod underscore and then whatever name you like, because uh, that's just one of the naming conventions you need to do, so I'm just going to say mod underscore plutonium block. And now I'm going to open the file I just created, mod underscore plutonium block, and just, you can delete everything. Okay, so I'm working in our newly created class, and I'm just going to add a comment on the top, just because that's uh, what I always do. So just put I just put uh, my name and then the date, and now we're going to declare the class. So the class has to be the same name as the file name. So we're just going to say public class mod underscore plutonium block, because that's our file name. And then the important part here is you need to put extends base mod because we're going to inherit from base mod. And now we need to create our default constructor. And to do that, you just say public and then the name of the class. You don't specify return type. so. And then we're just going to leave it blank for now. And um, before I do anything else, we want to add this little uh, if I could package dot we need to copy that into our class because if you don't do that then it's not gonna know where your Java file is located and it's gonna give you a whole bunch of errors saying it can't find classes and stuff like that so it's really important to do that now before we actually start making the block if you notice since we uh, extended base mod base mod is an abstract class and it has one abstract method which is version so abstract means that we have to override it in our subclass so pretty much we're just gonna I'm just gonna copy this and notice we don't need abstract and get rid of that so all we've done right here is override version and it returns a string because that's this is a string, so that's our return type. So, what you return is your Minecraft version. So, I'm making these mods for Minecraft 1.6.6. So, I'm going to return 1.6.6 in a string. So, with that, that's our basic class setup. So, now we actually just have to create our our uh, block. So, if you look in our block class, 
and look at the way blocks are defined, you'll notice that it has public, static, final, block, and then whatever the variable name is. And we're just going to follow that same naming. So we're just going to do public, static, final, block, because block is a class, so uh, we're pretty much just saying our new block is of the type block, which makes sense. So, And I'm going to name the variable plutonium, and then just put a semicolon. And if you notice, if you come down here, there's a, it says static, and then there's a block, and this is where all the variables are defined, so we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to say static, and now I'm going to, I'm going to model my plutonium block off of cobblestone, so I'm just going to come down here and copy this line of cobblestone, and, uh, you don't have to copy it, but just copying it makes it so you don't have to go back and forth and see what uh, method you have to call and stuff like that. So anyways, you say plutonium equals, and then you copy that line. And now we're just going to go through and set all our, uh, um, pretty much our properties that we want. So, okay, if you notice this first number where it says new block, this first number is your uh, ID number. So we don't want the same ID number as a previous made block, so I'm just going to set it to 120. And you can set it to whatever you want, but uh, I'm just setting it to 120. And then the second number is the index in the terrain.png file. So if you leave it 16, for example, when you create your plutonium block, it'll show up looking like cobblestone, which I don't want it to look like cobblestone, so... And I'm also not going to use the train.png file, so if you're going to use a separate uh, picture file, which is what I'm going to show you guys how to do, you're going to set it equal to zero. So, And uh, you can leave this material.rock. Um, if you're making dirt, you can do material.dirt or something like that. So, um, Hardness is how fast it takes to mine, so something with like 10 would be a really long time, and something like... 0 0.1 would not take long at all, so I'm just going to set it to like 1.1. Resistance is uh, how uh, resistant, resistant it is to explosion, so high resistance would mean it's harder to make uh, die with an explosion. So, um, step sound is the sound when you step on it. So, uh, if you notice, this is a variable name, and we don't have this variable name defined in our class. So we have to reference it, and it's in the block class, so all you have to do is say block dot, and then that'll solve the problem. Um, if that seems too complicated or you don't even feel like doing that, you can just delete it. It doesn't matter. Oops. And then the final thing we want to do is set our block name to plutonium. Now, this isn't the, uh, the name that appears when you put your mouse over. It's just, uh, I'm not even sure what it's used for, but it's just your block name. Okay, so now there's three things to add this block into the game. The first thing is in our constructor up here, we say mod loader and then period and then register block. That is the function. So if you want to take a look at it, it's in the mod loader class and um, register block. And it is right here. So this just says the signature of it, register block, and it takes a block type. So we're just going to register block and put our plutonium variable in there. Uh, second thing we're going to do is we're going to add the text of when you're in your inventory and you put your mouse over it. And it's going to display a certain text, so we're going to set that up. So we're going to say mod loader again. Uh, I think it's uh, add name. I don't know, you can uh, look in mod loader. I think it's called add name. Yep, add name, and then it says object, and then string. So, this is pretty much all you do. So, plutonium, and then whatever. I'm just going to make it say plutonium. And the final thing we have to do is remember that we don't want to use the train.png. So, we're going to use our own text file. And if you take a look, I'll show you my text file. Is... 
this plutonium underscore texture not PNG, just one I made. Uh, you guys can uh, make your own, but all I did was I edited the terrain dot PNG, or not edited it, but I uh, went to it and I cut out just like a block. And I just copied it and pasted it into a new one, and I used that, and I just made my own. So that's how I got that. So now we're gonna override that. So the way you do that is you say plutonium, and then there's a variable. Uh, I forget exactly what it's called, so I'll look. I think it's up here. Uh, it's called uh, block index and texture. So you just type that equals and then mod loader again. Uh, I believe it's add override. Let me double check. Add override. Yep. And that takes two strings, so the first one is slash terrain.png because you're replacing that. And make sure you put the slash, otherwise your uh, Minecraft won't work. And then you're going to replace it with slash plutonium underscore texture.png. And just save that. I guess I already saved it. Save that and make your way back to your MCP and we are gonna recompile it and hopefully if everything worked out good then I didn't have any errors and it should recompile fine and then once you're done recompiling it and reobfuscating it you have your own mod so okay it looks like it recompiled fine and I'm gonna wait till it recompiles the server Okay, now we have to re-obfuscate it, and re-obfuscating it, uh, it looks for any uh, changes in classes that we've done. So, for example, it'll find that we had a change because we created the mod underscore plutonium block file, and it will automatically add it to the obfuscation folder, which is different because in the past you had to manually say which ones you changed, but now it's nice because it automatically detects it. So, if you... Wait a second, it should... Okay, there we go. It said new class found. Should show you the name of your class, and then it says outputted mod underscore plutonium block, which is good. Okay, wait for this to re-obfuscate. Shouldn't have any. But, uh, okay. So now, to install your mod, just open your re-obfuscate folder, and then your Minecraft. And then you want to copy this, and don't forget your texture. And I'm just going to move this. Copy, paste, and all, so all you have to do is copy these two into your Minecraft.jar file. And I will do that. If you don't know where it is, it's on your C drive, under users, and then your name, and then app data. If you can't see app data, it's because it's hidden, so just... Go to your control panel and make it unhidden. So roaming, Minecraft, bin, and then open your Minecraft.jar file. And all you have to do is drag those two in there. And everything should work. So just close this. And I'm going to run Minecraft to make sure it does work. Log in. Okay. I'm going to create a test world. And uh, I also installed uh, the single player command mod just for the purpose of uh, showing you the block we made. You don't need it until uh, you can just skip to. Uh, I'll be doing a tutorial on how to uh, make recipes, so you can make your own recipe that makes the block, or uh, you can make it generate naturally, which hopefully I'll do a t tutorial on that too. But for now, I just say give, and then you say the item ID, which is 120. So I just gave myself plutonium. So if you notice, it's the texture that I had, and then when you put your mouse over it, it says plutonium. So... 
then you can just play it like a normal uh, block. So, anyways, uh, hope this helped, and uh, I'll see you on my next tutorial. Thanks.